All right, Ian Koniak here. We are gonna talk about money today. Money, money, money. And when it's good to pursue wealth and riches and when it's bad to pursue wealth and riches. And I'm gonna share a little bit of personal stuff in my, in my, uh, my talk today. So let's talk about when it's good to pursue. When money is good to pursue is when we have very tangible, specific goals that that money will enable us to accomplish. Most of the time in the near term. So for example, my wife and I got married back in 2013. She moved into my condo. My condo had lots of stairs. We had a baby in that condo. And I told her, give it five years and we'll buy your dream house when we got married, I promised her. Well, four years came and our dream house was out of pricing. It was out of uh, our budget. In California, we had about 1.3 million to spend and our dream house was around 1.8. And it became really simple, move out of Los Angeles or figure out a way to make more money. Well, that was the year I cleared seven figures for the first time and I sold almost 6 million in ACV and finished number one at Salesforce. A lot of what was driving me was my desire to provide a dream home for my family. In fact, I visualized it. I saw my wife gardening, I kid you not, in the same house that we are now. Saw it before it ever happened. Went to a retreat, spent a couple days visualizing it, called my wife that night, that night of the retreat, in Colorado, a men's retreat. And I said, honey, let's start shopping. I didn't know how I would get there yet, but I made that commitment that I was gonna do it. And then I was working from a place of purpose. I was working from a place of true desire. Um, and it's very empowering when you're working to pursue money for service of others, for a goal that is a stretch goal, a rad goal that's beyond, um, beyond your comfort zone, and that forces you to grow. That's a good thing. And money is just, you're not working for money, you're, you're working for what the money's gonna enable you to do, okay? And I think that example kinda says it all. I have lots of other examples. Um, I'll give one more. I got into sales uh, because I was a teacher. I was actually a teacher in Venezuela teaching English after college, lived there for a year, wanted to be a writer, wanted to um, actually, like do something total di totally different, photojournalism, traveling, documenting no doc national parks. But what I found was that I couldn't do that because um, I had a girlfriend in Venezuela. And when I my visa expired, I went back to the US, I had to say goodbye to her. And I thought I might not see her again. And I said, I'm gonna get rich and famous so I can bring you in here and don't worry, have faith. Well, when I called National Geographic and Discovery, and found out it's all basically freelance. I wasn't gonna be able to see her and I said, I gotta pivot. So I pivoted into sales and I told her, I'll have you in here within a year. That's how I got into sales because it was a opportunity which let me create my own income, which was going to enable me to bring my girlfriend from Venezuela, my ex-girlfriend, that's not my wife, um, into, into the US and I did it, I did it. And every day I was working from a place of like, it didn't feel hard. It didn't feel like a grind. It didn't feel like work because I had purpose. And when you have purpose that aligns with a certain goal and that goal specifically requires a certain amount of income or performance, that's when it becomes really, really powerful and, and healthy. Now, when riches actually um, become the thing you're working towards and there's not that goal associated with it, that's when it can be very, very dangerous and outright um, egocentric because I'll just give an example. My, my business is doing great. I will do seven figures in my first year of coaching this year, which is unheard of for new coaches, unheard of. And the goal actually was to do seven figures, but it wasn't because I wanted to make a million dollars. It was because I wanted to stretch myself and really um, redefine what's possible in this industry. It was about pursuit of my full potential. So I found the top people, people like Marcus Chan and John Barros and 
many other people that are doing very well in coaching and I found out what's possible. And I modeled it, I joined a mastermind because the goal was about serving a lot of people and also pursuit of my own potential, redefining what's possible. Because I wanna help inspire people to go out and do things that they never thought would be, would be possible. And so that to me, that to me is the goal. That to me is, is when, and I reset my goals every single year. I'm coming to my house now. We've been here for four, four years. And when we bought it, none of this was here. There was no grass, well, there was just grass, but there was no pool, there was no island, there was no entertainment center. Now it becomes a place to entertain. So we have barbecues out here, kids come over. It's absolutely fantastic. But that became a goal during, we have guests over, so I don't wanna to be too loud because they're in the back house. But, um, that became a goal. That became a goal was to redo the backyard and to create experiences, not have to wait and do it over 20 years, but do it all at once so that my kids could have their, um, basically ha have as much time as possible in our dream home. So that's, that's the kind of stuff where it's, it's really healthy. Okay. Where, where it's negative is where the goal is, is, is display of one's means where the goal is to, to impress others. Um, I don't own a car, for example. I do not own a car. A lot of people are like, why the hell don't you have, own a car? You could afford it. Um, I used to drive a Maserati. It's not about the money. I can go buy a Lamborghini cash tomorrow and not think about it. But the reason I don't own a car is because my identity is not someone who wants to show off the material things that they have. I'm showing you my house simply because I'm trying to share an example of the goal setting and, and, and it's for my family. But me, I, I generally wanna stay humble and keep my identity small. And by me buying a car just because, there's no point for me. We have a family car, I have an e-bike, I can take the kids around and I work from home. And if I travel, I hop in an Uber. I don't wanna be wasteful. And I see it as being wasteful. And frankly, there, it's, it, it's not just wasteful with like buying a car, but it's also, you know, an expense that I don't need, you know, even though if I could afford it, paying insurance and registration or whatever, like it, it's, it's, I just see it as a waste until I need the car, then there's no point. And so again, fundamentally where pursuit of riches becomes really, really bad is when you're doing it to show off, when you're doing it because it fills a void, you're not happy with yourself and you're trying to do something you think will make you happy. You know, have, and here's the thing, like I could have a bigger house, but I don't wanna have a bigger house because I'm happy and I'm comfortable. And, and again, keeping your identity small, there's no reason to go out and try and show off. We have three bedrooms in our house. It's enough for our family. Then we have our um, guest house, my office where I work in, and that's a fourth bedroom people can stay in. And if people really want um, more than you know, one person staying, we have a little playroom that we can throw a blow, blow up mattress in. So we're fine. We don't need necessarily more things. That's the key. We don't necessarily need more things and I don't want to show off and basically come in and, and make people, you know, it's, it's basically when, when you pursue riches, you're doing it a lot of times because you want to feel better about yourself or keep up with the Joneses. Okay, and that's where it gets really, really dangerous. So being happy with what you have, being content with what you have is absolutely the way um, where money doesn't control you. But when you're always pursuing more, when you're always chasing, that is, that's a chase that frankly is gonna go on forever. It's gonna go on forever because um, there's no limit you know, to what you, what you can chase. Um, for me, the reason I wanna make a lot of money and continue to do so is so I don't have to worry about money, okay? If a fridge breaks, I can go buy a new fridge. If my wife wants to do improvements with the house, we can go do it. Um, you know, buy new furniture. We just did this to our landscaping. So it's like lush, lush, lush in the back. It's the front of our house. It was expensive to put all that in. So I'll leave you with this. Don't let riches control you or pursuit of riches. Always have goals and make pursuit of money, pursuit of financial freedom where you don't have to worry about money. Make that the goal. I'm Ian Koniak. I'll see you later.